Uh, it's so great to be back. And, um, you know, here's the thing. That Met win yesterday was, was amazing for a lot of reasons. Number one, I, I sent Ronnie a text uh, in the first inning. I'm like, mercy, please get this guy out of the yeah. freaking game. And, you know, Buck Showalter, I guess they just needed length. And, and the Phillies were exhausted, too, in their bullpen, and that obviously showed itself. But, I mean, this is one of, this is one of those games where you never expected the team to win. And with the rain delay and with everything else going on and, you know, the doubleheader the day before, uh, it was just it – was, it was amazing. And, and can it come through? Yeah, twice. Twice. And, you know, this again, I, you know, every, every one of these guys, new guys anyway, has had their moments. And Ken has had a number of moments. You know, Escobar's had a number of moments. Of course, Sterling Marte, or Sterling Marte has had a number of moments. Uh, we know about Scherzer. Uh, I, it just, th- th- these are the special moments that, that tell you that there's a special season underway. Yeah, I mean, think about the weekend as a whole as you're going into this series and you know you're not going to have DeGrom and Scherzer. You know that you're going to be pitching guys like Trevor Williams, David Peterson, Jose Buto. This is what you're going into this series with. And a team in Philadelphia that's not all that bad, that's chasing a wild card themselves. And then you've got guys coming in like Nate Fisher pitching the way he did. You never heard of the guy in your life. I mean, that is what is the foundation of an incredible season. It's not just the stars. It's not just everybody that's been here. But when you call people up, when you need people in a pinch, when Son of Buto was terrible, but still, you know what but, I'm but saying? But he hung in there. I he mean, did, I, I, right. I he gave up two home runs to Bone. But, I, you know, the, the thing is, is that he, he threw like 100 pitches in so yeah. four innings. And poor Roddy and Gary, and I know I'm sure, you know, Howie and Wayne on the radio were doing the same thing, complaining yeah, how long these games are going on sure. for? Because those guys are probably exhausted too, but uh, not nearly as exhausted as the players. And I'm sure the mental aspect of the game with Buck Showalter and and trying to figure out, you know, who's playing where and what's going on and who we pitch in and how. What am I going to say to a guy that I've never met before? Hmm. <laughs> the whole thing. Yeah. But it goes to show you, you know, how long like a 162 game season is because a lot has happened in 10 days. You know. The last day I was here, the Jets are getting ready to play uh, a preseason game. And Zach Wilson throws his first interception. He gets hurt. And now he's gone for four to six weeks, whatever. And, and I said on the air, I said, this is like Met heaven. The Mets are healthy. Mm-hmm. And then I was reminded on, uh, you know, on Twitter many times during my time off that uh, I, I was the one that was the Maloik and I, I probably touched the money and all that other you stuff. You did say that a lot right did, before I, you left. Well, yeah. yeah, because they had everybody was healthy. That's Every, right. And then next thing you know, here come the obliques, here come mm-hmm. the groin strains, here come the elbows, here come the shoulders. I, I, yep. <laughs> and it was like six guys in a row. <laughs> and I'm getting, you know, banged up. And then, you know, they had a, that was an unbelievable series down in Atlanta, though. Oh, yeah. That was, that was a great series, even though they lost, you know, uh, the series. and But picking themselves up and, and taking three out of four from Philadelphia, that, that was huge. And that game yesterday... Man, it was like at the beginning you're saying, man, we're gonna get, we're gonna, we're gonna lose like 19 to 13 or something. Well, yeah, I mean exactly. I mean, so you, after that Thursday loss where Degrom ends up losing, he wasn't sharp. The team really couldn't score in that last game, and then you looked at what was ahead with the pitching matchups. You were thinking, man, this could be one of these stretches for them that they haven't had all year long. And the Braves were playing the Astros, so you felt okay about that, but they end up taking two out of three from them. But they never, they really have never had that swoon where you got really, really nervous. Now, when the Braves came back and were only a half game behind the Mets, it was basically because the Braves were playing at an unreal pace. It's not like the Mets were being, you know, going down downhill at all. They just, the Braves were just out of their minds. And when you need them every single time this season, when you need them to win a game, when you're down after the Segura home run yesterday and he throws his helmet off and he's running around the bases and you're thinking, here we go again. And then boom, right in the ninth inning here's McNeil with a double to lead off the inning here's Canna with another home run to take the lead here's Nimmo tacking on to give Edwin Diaz a little bit of breathing room in the ninth he hadn't pitched in three days they always figure out a way I mean it's been incredible and we're here you know pushing up against September and it's been the same story since April they're relentless and you know and here come the Yankees and the Dodgers and you know I'll tell you what I hope they don't play tonight they they could use a, they could use a yeah, day off. The rain, yeah. I know they have a day off on Wednesday already scheduled. So call it today. Give everybody the day off today, and then you're going to play the Yankees and Dodgers back to back. Supposed to be raining throughout the night too. I know throughout yes, the day. Yes. So I would just say that um, it would be 
It would behoove, I think, at least for the Mets. I don't know, you know, the Yankees, they, 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 they've gone, the Yankees have gone from having one of the great years, in the midst of having mm-hmm. one of the great years of all times, to one of the greatest collapses of all time. Well, yeah, they're sort of in the midst of it right now. If they would have lost yesterday, that would have been the scariest that it's been for them. I mean, this was a, you know, after the Aaron Boone slap at the table thing, which I'm sure that you saw on Saturday, you know, he they come out and they win on Paul O'Neill Day. But, you know, they still have a seven-game lead, which is just unbelievable to it think is. how well, bad they've played and they still have a seven-game lead. Well, it goes to show you how great they played yeah. when they were on that, you know, trajectory of having that great, great season. And then all of a sudden, their bats have gone cold. I mean, they just... It's it's amazing to me. Now I know Stanton's going to be coming back sooner or later, and maybe he'll be back for the Mets here. But, Stanton, yeah, I, I but I it's it's one player. I mean, you know, and they and they did make trades, and the trades obviously haven't maybe Ben Attendee's worked out a little bit, but well, maybe, not until yesterday, right? But he still, you know, he still gets on base, and he's still he's still a contact hitter and all those things. But I, I just. I, I don't know. You know, the Jordan Montgomery trade was, you know, everybody's flummoxed over that, uh, you know, and, and what's his name? Montos or whatever the hell his name is. Montas. Montas. Montas has, hasn't been worth anything considering what Montgomery's doing with the Cardinals and, and of course, what's his name's doing with Seattle. Right. Uh, Luis Castillo. Luis Castillo. So I, I just, it's amazing to me that if this were in the beginning of the season, I'm telling you, Aaron Boone would have been fired. And it's not because Aaron Boone they're losing, but something has to change. See what the Phillies did with Joe Girardi. Yeah, they did early on in the year. Right. And most most teams, like, you know, basketball teams will do that. Hockey teams will do that. Football teams are less likely to fire, like, early in the season. They may do it later in the season. Mm -hmm. But baseball, you know, if you get off to a really bad start, like, say, your first 60 games and, you know, you're like, you know, you have 15 wins. You know, your team, your guy's going to get fired because something's got to happen in the locker room. Something's got to happen in the dugout. And and just because we're this late in the season, nothing's going to happen to uh, to Aaron Boone. But, man, I, I tell you, if they, if they played this way to start the season. Yeah, there would have been a good chance. I mean, I know Brian Cashman has really been patient with Aaron Boone. It doesn't seem like he's ever been ready to move on from him, but that would have been very, very interesting. And we'll see how the season ends up. I mean, I know that Brian Cashman doesn't have a contract after the year. People think that's just a formality. He'll end up coming back. But I mean, if they collapse to the point where they don't make it out of a postseason series yeah. and this trend continues, I mean, then obviously major changes have to be made because of where they came from. I you mean, that, that start may end up changing this organization in the short term. And who the hell knows if Aaron Judge is going to be around either. Either. So here's by the a, way, the fans were letting them know well, yesterday, booing Brian Cashman and booing Al Steinbrenner. I, I was just going to say that, that, um, you know, I was happy for Paul O'Neill. He's a great guy. He's a great player for the Yankees. He deserves to have his day the way he did yesterday. It was great. And, and I'm glad the Yankees won uh, in lieu of, of him getting his uh, jersey retired and having Paul O'Neill day, which was pretty cool for him. And, you know, he's a pretty funny guy and yeah. you know, the way he goes about things. So uh, I was really happy for him. So, uh, you know, the thing about that, though, was it was telling that Hal and Hank both, I mean, uh, Hal, it's not Hank, I'm going to be Stephen A. Smith. Uh, <laughs> Hal and, uh, of course, um, Brian, Brian Cash- Cashman Brian got Cashman got. Got booed, and that tells you that there is now the narrative within the Yankee fan base that these two together are running like some sort of like secondary operation here now. Yeah, I mean, I think that the fans are at the point now where they have had it. They were giving them the benefit of the doubt for a long time, but they have lost six series in a row. Something crazy like uh, they've only won two series out of the last 14 or something nuts like that, and they're in a full-blown spiral. And by the way, I mean, this is about the worst time to run into the Mets. The Mets already swept them once in the two-game Subway Series, and now the Mets are coming in with potentially Scherzer and then DeGrom. We'll see if DeGrom pitches the second game. We'll see what happens with the weather. But, I mean, on top of everything that they have gone through, now the Mets running into that buzzsaw with potentially their two best pitchers? You know, but here, here's the thing. DeGrom needs to pitch. I don't give a damn what anybody says, especially like today. They're gonna. I, I think they'll call it off today. Yeah, and they'll play the game on Wednesday. So the day off will be for the players today. They'll have to play Wednesday, and Degrom needs to be on the mound on Wednesday. That, that's his. That's his normal start time. What do we do? Why, why are we babying him? Does he still need to be babied? 
Yeah, I think that they're just so unbelievably extra cautious. But I'm with you. If you're good enough to go out there and pitch and we didn't see you for a year and it feels like they held him back and then were really, really cautious and now he's out there and you need him, he should be pitching every fifth day. I mean, I I don't understand why we need an extra day and then on top of that, an extra day because they had Wednesday off and then pitch him there. I mean, it just seems... unbelievable. This guy is like, uh, you know, was he brittle now all of a sudden? I guess so. So my thing is, is that uh, if it's regular rotation, get your ass out there and pitch. And especially now, if uh, today the game is going to be called off, I, I do believe that. I really do. Um, you know, you see the forecast. Take a look at my Weather Channel app and see what we got going on for uh, the Bronx at about 7 o'clock tonight. You know, and, 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 the, Mets, and the Mets bullpen could use a break. Oh, of course. <laughs> Quite everybody. frankly, they could use a break. Yeah. I know it was supposed to rain all day today, but I didn't look past that. Let's see, hourly in the Bronx. Thunderstorms are dangerous. Yeah, of course. Yeah, 61% at 7 o'clock. And I, I don't need uh, Scherzer having to sit through another rain delay. Yeah, that is true. Ugh. I mean, it's, it's around 50%, 40%, 60% all throughout the night. So we've seen, you know, this summer's been with the rain. It says it's going to rain. It doesn't rain. We're in like a severe drought in certain parts of the area. So who the hell knows if it ends up pouring or not tonight. But, yeah, I mean, that, that would end up being beneficial for the Mets if this game were called tonight. Yeah, well, I, I hope I, – I personally hope it is, and I hope that uh, Scherzer goes tomorrow and DeGrom goes on Wednesday. That's, that's what I would expect. Yeah, do you think that the slap of the table had anything to do with the Yankees winning yesterday? You know, I, I just think he's frustrated too. I, you know, he uh, is obviously also being asked questions about what his players' opinions are. Yeah, and one of those opinions from Aaron Judge is like, you know, we're just not really into each other on the bench and all this other stuff. Well, he said the energy wasn't great in the clubhouse. Right, exactly. And you know, could that be because they traded Jordan Montgomery? Could it be because you know they have some new faces in there? I mean, it's just. You know, Rizzo's finally getting back in, and you know, Stanton's not there yet. So I don't know. You know, it's amazing how many guys are playing for both of these teams. Like, like Beatty, for instance. Mm-hmm. Like, really, he's playing this much? Yeah. Well, yeah. they need him with all the injuries. It's it's crazy. Yeah. I mean, this like, is Estef- uh, uh, what's it? Uh, Floreal. Yeah. He's another Floreal. one. Yep. I mean, Oswaldo Cabrera. Uh, he's one. been great, and he's right. made a couple great catches. I mean. By the way, you know, he bobbles that ball in that critical situation in the seventh inning with the bases loaded and Vlad Guerrero hits the ground ball to him. He bobbles it and Guerrero was not running full speed out of the box in that situation was not at all. And that could have been a a run for the Blue Jays and taking a lead in a Yankee team that was spiraling. That was a key moment yesterday. It was like it was like yesterday with Vogel back on second. Like, how come he's not scoring on the McGee? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, he pulled up into third there, and then they actually they said didn't they send out the trainer? To yeah, yeah, they sent him. Fucking like, the, the trainer and everybody's out there, and I'm like, right. come on, Biggs, you should be at home. <laughs> right, I know. I mean, we expect you to score. You can run. You got good feet. Yeah, you, know, you can you. scoot. I will say that gray uniform makes him look bigger. Though. <laughs> and it's true. It's an right? unflattering color for a big. guy. I was guy. telling Eddie, I thought he lost a little weight today, and Eddie said, you know, and I'm wearing a white shirt. <clears throat> Which normally, when you wear a white shirt, that's not a good. It's not a good thing. But yeah. I, I felt like he lost a little weight. But then you see Big Vogel back in that great uniform yesterday from the side. Yeah, he's got some girth to him. Thank you for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And don't forget to hit the red bell so you're notified when we have new content.